Um, I started out posting um, videos about my experience with Hurricane Katrina on TikTok, and I didn't think it would get as much of a response as it has. I'm also an archivist, specifically a digital archivist, and it's very important to me that people know that videos on the internet are kind of ephemeral, right? We have to make copies of these things in order to preserve them when there's a slew of information and censorship that's happening left, right, and center. I know this is YouTube, and I know this is a vertical format, but I'm going to upload a compilation of my videos I've posted on TikTok about Katrina, its aftermath, the intentionally botched disaster recovery, um, humanitarian aid, because I think it's important that I don't, those, those videos I spoke in a moment of truth, in the heat of the moment, impassioned, um, and I think that matters. I don't want to refilm all of that with a lot of new information because it's the same information and to re-traumatize myself, frankly, by thinking about all of this again. I prefer to upload it in its entirety. I hope that you take this sincerely. I hope that you take this through the eyes of who I was when Hurricane Katrina hit, I was a nine-year-old girl in South Louisiana, didn't have a lot of money, had both parents, thankfully, and we were able to evacuate um, toward the Baton Rouge area where we had family. We were very lucky because we all survived. I hope that you don't let preconceived notions of what you've heard about Katrina uh, or what you've seen on news coverage from the time. Um, I hope you don't let that impact your perception of what I'm about to tell you, because all of this, again, is through the lens of a nine-year-old girl. Most of these memories were repressed for quite a while. They have come back up to the surface 19 years after Katrina. Next year, 2025, will be 20 years. What can we learn? from this disastrous response to a disaster. What can we learn to prevent this neglect and abuse from happening again? I hope that you stick around. I hope that you listen. I hope that if you've seen some of these videos before, you stick around for the, uh, the whole picture. I'm gonna give you all I've got. I'm gonna give you all the earnestness and sincerity in the world. I also have been working on independent Louisiana cultural research for the last four or five years and last year I was a research fellow at the Vatican Archives seminar for archiving and preservation where I had my personal research uh, peer-reviewed and vetted by archivists at the Vatican Archives. I've worked my whole life at this. I have worked my whole life at making sure Stories that need to get told are told. And I hope you listen to this one. Let me just say my piece very quickly and very carefully. I remember being a child and going through Hurricane Katrina and being one of the fortunate ones because my family didn't die. And I remember after the aftermath was over, after we got a little bit of TV back, we had like a black and white TV um, like a battery powered TV and we watched the news coverage and we watched helicopters circle overhead with people like making signs from like sh like on plywood from their attic carving please help please please help me um, the National Guard was preventing people from uh, from rescue operations they turned away my uncle who at the time was like a Louisiana state cop who had a boat and he was going out on like a rescue mission they physically stopped him. Think about that. A law enforcement officer with a boating license wants to go out and save people in his community, but we're being turned away. The Red Cross embezzled billions and billions of dollars, $3 billion, um, the Louisiana uh, state government uh, of our Red Cross money. So we never saw that. Um, when the people in Gaza are telling you the Red Cross is not doing anything for them, they mean it. It's not something that's, this is, it can't get to them. 
I am watching shit. I am watching people die on my phone in the same way I was watching people die on TV at nine years old, shaking in a in a house with with no electricity. It's 150 degrees, shaking in fear. In South Louisiana, my mom had nearly gone catatonic. She could like my mom was in so much fear. I I I'm nine. My brother's five. She had two young kids. I don't. I don't understand where your fucking humanity is. I don't understand, especially survivors of Katrina, you should be sick. You should be nauseous and you should be screaming to help them because nobody fucking helped us. Nobody helped us. And I swear to God, if there's, if there's one thing I want to be known for, it's giving a shit. If you don't give a shit, it's too, f fuck you. It's too fucking late. This is exactly what they gave us survivors of Katrina. Um, as aid. That's what the U.S. government gave its own citizens. Not to say I'm... I'm disappointed and not surprised. I'm not surprised. It is... It is looking... I didn't even watch this all the way through the first time. I didn't even watch this all the way. No, I'm gonna be fucking sick. Are you kidding me? No, I can fucking- People have asked me like what the context of that is and why it upsets me and us so much. Um, the little bottle of hot sauce in there, the Tabasco, is made in Avery Island, Louisiana. It's a tiny little, tiny, tiny town in South Louisiana. It's something that's like our biggest export that people love that we're really proud of. And we are, as natives of the state of Louisiana, we are survivors of great tragedy and great pain um, since the, you know, since colonization began. Um, and we maintained something of our own and made it so loved universally. Um, to see it expired, it's clearly expired, it's half evaporated, it is expired, thrown at people who are starving at the hands of their government and dying at the hands of their government, like I saw when I was nine years old during Hurricane Katrina, these people have bleeding ulcers in their stomachs. <laughs> These people have not, imagine not eating for months and you, it, it, your stomach, it's like, it's like they, they beat us into the ground, stole our oil, spilled oil, spilled the oil back into the Gulf, destroyed natural wildlife still, uh, fishermen suffer to this day people who make their living off of you know fishing which is a massive massive part of the louisiana economy and very independently done by families and uh, you know biz local businesses and, and and things that give us such livelihood and after they stomped us into the dirt and took everything and destroyed our natural resources they took a little token of something that i love it is iconography of Louisiana um, and throw it at people as though they're dogs. It like, I see what I am worth to you. I have seen what I have been worth to the government since I was nine years old. This is, and I'm here. I have said a thousand and one things, but like, like how those MREs were not halal, how they included that little Tabasco, that was salt in a wound. That was something, that was something to laugh at us. I say us, because we are not, we are not free till we're all free. I almost even feel guilty likening a natural disaster to war.
war crime, but like, I'm just talking about in terms of like humanitarian aid here, you know what I mean? Like the way that this is botched and blundered intentionally. I don't have anything to say other than what is under our feet in Louisiana? Oil. What is under their feet in the Middle East? Oil. It's very simple. It's all very simple. I could see it as a child. I saw it in elementary school. I wrote a letter to George W. Bush. I'm not joking. I wrote a letter to George W. Bush when I was eight years old, the year before Katrina hit, because I was still going to my Catholic elementary school before I went to my public middle school. Um, and I wrote him a letter because I s heard and like watched on PBS that like, like deforestation was happening. And I was like, and, and like, it made me really upset. And I was like, I see trees being cut down all the time. What can we do to like, I was like, trees provide us oxygen. Like I was eight, like I was just a kid. You know what I mean? Like I was just excited and I saw stuff like on PBS that was like very exciting to me. I read stuff in books. It was very exciting to me. And like the letter I, like my mom was like, Did, I was like, I want to write a letter to the president. She's like, that's awesome. Do it, kid. My mom always, always my number one. And, uh, and my dad drove me to the, to the post office and I put it in the mailbox and I, and I mailed it. And, um, and I got the letter, I got a letter back in the mail and I was like, what? This was months later. And, um, I, <laughs> I opened it. We still have it. It was a signed headshot of George W. Bush. I didn't ask for that. And the letter that was responded back to me was Alexis. Thanks for caring about the environment. Here's a list of links you can go to learn more about it. Signed to the president. Signed to George W. Bush. I was like, I literally, I told my mom, I was like, does he think I'm stupid? I was like, does he think I don't know how to use Google? Like, does he think we were the children left behind, I guess. It, <laughs> I laugh because it's all I can do. Uh, it's comically ironic. It's comically it's mockery on like an insane mega level and I see it in my everyday life and I'm seeing it and I'm just talking about myself here man like think in terms of like how many people were affected by Hurricane Katrina and by the tragedies in Gaza not thinking about Hurricane Sandy not thinking about the Maui fires not thinking about Puerto Rico not thinking about uh, the, the big giant fires in California, those natural disasters. How many people were just affected by Hurricane Katrina and what's going on in Gaza? It has an effect on every, I can't, and I know, I've repeated myself a thousand times. What else can I say, man? Like every day and a half, I'm like, what else can I say? And then I'm like, actually, uh, fucking another thing. <sighs> We just want to be listened to, man. It's not, it's not easy. It's not fucking easy. And I've been an emotional wreck lately. Genuinely, I don't like to talk about my feelings on here. I don't. It, it, it makes me uncomfortable. But this is genuinely emotionally devastating. <laughs> I, <laughs> and I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't have any answers. It sucks. It sucks to not have any answers because when I was a kid, I thought I had all the answers, man. I was like, I'll write to the president. It will be very simple. Recently, the U.S. government airdropped 38,000 meals into Gaza, ignoring the fact that some of them landed directly into the ocean. Let's assume that all 38,000 meals made it to the people it needed to make it to. There are also people in Gaza saying that some of those meals were expired, but let's pretend like all 38,000 meals made it to the people it needed to make it to and they were able to eat them. Let's also ignore the fact that it is recommended that you eat three meals a day. So let's just assume it's one meal per person. There are two million people in Gaza. They sent 38,000 meals. That means that one person gets one meal for a little bit less than 2% of Gaza's entire population. All these numbers are embarrassing and don't cover a fraction of what we've given Israel in order to forcibly starve and also terrorize the Palestinians for months, even years, if you really want to get into it. 
I want to pivot for a second. In December, the weekend donated $2.5 million to humanitarian aid in Gaza. It provided 4 million meals and was able to feed almost 200,000 families for weeks. That one man, that one person did more than the entire U.S. government. When we say that celebrities should speak out, when we say that celebrities should make themselves useful, when you say, oh, but what good can they do? That is the good that they can do. There is evidence that one celebrity with some money can do more good if they want to than the entire U.S. government. So the next time you think about defending your celebrity fave with that tired line, well, what can they do? They're just a singer. There's actually a lot that they can do. The people who are leaving nasty comments, little, well, actually, uh, well, the technicality of the, the You clearly have never, ever been in a disaster situation where you need to survive because humanitarian aid is not helping you. If you have not, if you have not lived through a humanitarian crisis, what the fuck are you being contrarian for? What are you being contrarian? Who are you helping? Think about this. Sit down. Who are you helping? I don't give a fuck what else you're doing. I'm trying to make a point. No one gives a fuck about your point. No one cares about your point on paper if it is not helpful and constructive. All you are doing is adding noise and being an asshole. How? I can't believe I have to say how would you feel if your entire family was killed and they gave you moldy food and people were like, you should be grateful. That's how you sound. That is how you sound. And I don't care, I don't care if I'm a bitch. Oh, oh she's bad. How can you look at yourself in the mirror? How can you look at yourself and not feel humiliated? For the record, I don't want to have to talk about any of this stuff. I don't want to have to talk about my severe childhood trauma that I have not yet processed on a massive internet scale to be commented on by strangers in bad faith. I don't want to do that. I'm not like, this is bigger than me. This is bigger than the thousands of people whose lives were destroyed and forever impacted by Katrina. This is bigger. This is bigger than the entirety of Gaza right now. This is a precedent that needs to be set on a global scale for how humanitarian aid has to go forward. I don't give a fuck about the nastiness I'm receiving. Does it, does, is it upsetting? Yeah, no fucking shit, I'm a human being. Is it any more upsetting than the severe trauma that we were put through in my childhood? Fuck no. I said this earlier. I don't give a fuck about your devil's advocacy, okay? I have seen the devil and you are not him. Right now, I am being called a liar. Right now, people are telling me that I'm spread spreading misinformation when I tell the story of how we got moldy MREs as aid during Katrina. And people are showing their moldy MREs that they're getting in, in Palestine right now, in Gaza. Those are still fine. Eat. Eat it in front of me. Eat it right now. After months of starvation with bleeding ulcers. It doesn't matter. Oh, the military eats them. They shouldn't have to either. Are you fucking insane? What kills me is so many people think that just because they suffered... Everyone else needs to suffer. No, not enough people have the mindset of, hey, this was horrible. I went through something horrible. Nobody else should have to go through that. Why is that a contrarian take? Why is it insane to, to, to draw parallels between two evils that have happened and are currently happening at the hands of the U.S. government? The military, yeah, the military shouldn't have to eat them either. Nobody, the military industrial complex shouldn't exist. We are all now realizing we have been abused and have been conditioned to submit to abuse. And the thought of breaking that down is so much more upsetting to these people than like just calling me a liar. Okay, you want a nine year old? You, you, a nine-year-old a lie in her diary about what happened to her during Katrina. 
There are things that I will never tell you that happened to me. It's nobody's business and I don't think it would help anyone. When I share stuff like this, it's because I think that maybe it'll help somebody who's maybe been through something similar. Oh, I'm so selfless, I'm so just saying. It's fucking asinine that I have to keep making these videos. You know what, I'm, I'm, I'm over it, I'm over it. Th call me a liar, call me fucking stupid, call me a bitch, cause to say that I say, it's, it's a reflection on you. I'm still here, bitch. I'm not going anywhere. When the levees broke, there was nothing more that could be done. The dam quite literally had burst. Entire neighborhoods like the Lower Ninth Ward were completely swept away. The levees broke in such a way that I have heard on several occasions from both complete strangers and close loved ones say that they'd heard bombs going off at the levees. It wasn't concrete cracking and breaking, they'd say. I know the sound of a bomb. Most of us have still not processed the collective trauma we've faced as a people affected by this disaster. To not only have everything and everyone we loved harmed to the most painful level imaginable, but to have the government laugh in your face, the one you elected while you beg for aid. At nine years old, I was just beginning to learn about government, how officials are elected for the people by the people to serve their citizens. And I and every other person around me saw that this was not the case. The year before Katrina hit, in 2004, I decided to write a letter to George Bush, noting that the wetlands in Louisiana were being destroyed with climate change and that something needed to be done about it. I was so excited to receive a letter back in the mail to see that the president had answered my request. How amazing! I opened the letter to find a headshot of Bush with an attached letter listing websites I could go to for kids to learn about the environment. I know about the environment, I thought. Why do you think I'm writing to you? There are parts of Louisiana that are ghost towns to this day. Buildings and homes ripped to their bare bones, haunting and empty. These are the parts they don't care about. These are the parts someone has to care about. Who do we turn to when our leaders fail? What do we as a people do nearly 20 years later to even begin processing this trauma? It's never gone away. It may never go away, but the memory won't be destroyed. Now when a whole generation of Katrina babies now have a voice, a rage that is being expressed that has been bottled up since some of us took our first steps. Step one is release, letting out our experiences into the ether and hoping our tears are not in vain. We won't let them be. Not again. Act, I see that my family were victims of an ethnic cleansing and a genocide. Yeah, I I'm on a fucking roll with ranting today, but I also cannot... Katrina hit when I was nine, right? To hear that the National Guard isn't coming to save people who are drowning live on television, um, your neighbors, your friends, your cousins, your siblings, friends, like the National Guard can't come in because it's, it looks really bad for tourism. Tourism, you are watching us drown and die and starve. You sick fuck. You're a little kid in school and you just learn about government at that age. You know, you learn that a bill becomes a law and the government's supposed to help you. That's, the, you know, they're there by the people, for the people. The people are dying. The people are screaming. Babies are dying. Elderly people are left in their homes. Why didn't they just leave? They had been through 50 hurricanes before that. And before that, the pumps fucking worked. The levees didn't fucking break. There was a food critic one time, Anthony Bourdain talked about this in one of his books, that said um, New Orleans got what they deserved because it was a city full of, you know, fat fucks who were sinners, essentially. So you want to tell me, the 2,000 people died. It is the deadliest natural disaster in national history. And what did you fucking do? You watched us die. Then, when we got a little bit of money, you gave us a little bit of money. You know, it was fine for my grandparents to live in a mold-infested FEMA trailer. That's fine. Fuck these people, right? What are they going to do? They're poor. They have nothing else anyway. Beggars can't be choosers. Take what you fucking get. Nine years old and I'm sitting there watching my mom cry by the front door because she doesn't know if my dad is dead or alive because he went out to get gas and he's been gone for 24 hours and we were lucky because only you know part of our roof blew off nobody died no i didn't have to sit in my attic for weeks on end you know begging for help and waving to helicopters who didn't 
come down and, you know, it's a spectacle. That was a spectacle. The Bush administration thought it was a spectacle and we weren't worth saving. It could happen to you. It could happen to fucking anybody. Nine years old, one day you're sitting in class and then the next day, 2,000 people in your home are dead. You've lost everything. You've lost everything. And they won't help you. Cool. Cool. You want to know why I think the way I fucking think? That's fucking why. I can't go into depth about this right now, but if you guys want to look up the Cajun Navy, they're the, tr like, the epitome of, like, risking life and limb for... They, they told them, they said, we want to bring our boats out here and rescue these people that are stranded in the flood and the police and the military said nope not allowed and they said fuck it we're taking our boats out anyway and we're gonna go rescue people fuck are you gonna do arrest us go ahead there's a lot of really powerful stories just look up cajun navy um every every good thing in the world to all of them it, that that's they're beautiful people i will never forget it was like post-apocalyptic like going to the grocery store like i my mom has never physically held on to me so tight that she left nail marks in my skin because my god we wanted bread and milk because she had kids at home and these people were like fucking you don't even know if you can go to the grocery store and feed your fucking kids because like there's fucking crazy people running around shooting people and they're calling they're always just calling the the you know black and brown people in those neighborhoods that lived in those neighborhoods for however many fucking 100 years looters and this and that and they strategically called the white people going into ruined supermarkets um what was it survivalists versus looters and thugs just listen to the language around how they speak about people it is incredibly telling there seems to be a lot of confusion about this, and I just want to be clear, um, in the video I said Anthony Bourdain was citing a, a critic that said those things about Louisiana. Bourdain was a huge supporter of the rebuilding of New Orleans. He is our fucking ally. That man has come to Louisiana so many times and given nothing but love to our people. I just wanted to really clarify that because it was, I don't know if it was Billy Gray, it was some, some stupid fuck that said that shit about Louisiana. And in Bourdain's book, it was, um, it was his second book. And he was trash in that motherfucker. He said, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, uh, without New Orleans, you know, without chefs and music and this, we have nothing, da, 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 da. And I will, I ride or die for that man. I, Anthony Bourdain is a patron saint in my head, in my house. I want to clarify that beautiful, sweet angel man never, ever said a bad word about New Orleans. May he rest in power for the rest of eternity. That's the thing a lot of people don't know is New Orleans is like New York in the fact that like three quarters of people who live there don't even have a car. Where are you going to go? And they say, oh, why didn't they evacuate this, that, the other? These people had been in that same house for 50, 60 years, going through three hurricanes a year, never had a problem. The pumps worked. The levees didn't break. Experts came in and said, these levees will not withstand a bad storm. They knew. And on top of that, the Louisiana government embezzled, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, it was like $3 billion they embezzled of Red Cross money, FEMA money, this, that, and the other. But it's cool, because my grandparents' house got washed away in 14 seconds, but FEMA trailers, at least theirs was just moldy. Some people have formaldehyde in their FEMA trailers. A girl commented on my last post, she took her first steps in a FEMA trailer. That's what's worse, is that they couldn't be bothered to give a fuck. They didn't even care. They didn't care. They didn't care. They didn't know. They didn't think. They didn't think. They didn't think. Because they don't give a fuck. And they fucking should. People think we exaggerate when we say that, because especially our graveyards are above ground, because we're below sea level, um, so when the flood happened and the levees broke and the, and, you know, the storm surge was just too much, um, where do these bodies go? But up to the surface. Where do the unprotected bodies go that weren't in tombs or, or mausoleums? Where are those grave sites we didn't know about? Where are those gra mass grave sites? There were, like, bodies of, of enslaved bones being washed, like, I get a lump in my throat every time I talk about it, but you would be trying to drive to evacuate, which is a privilege that a lot of people don't understand. 
and you will see dead bodies floating next to you while while the cops were shooting at you while you are holding your child your only child in your arms and just trying to get in and out of walmart something anything you could i just need a loaf of bread i just need milk because like i mean like they called us refugees they called us looters they said that it would be for the best that we were wiped out they said that it was I have heard things said to my face that left to my own devices, I would be in federal prison. I cannot say anything that would encapsulate the Katrina parallel better than that. This is what happened to us. This is history repeating itself. Oh, you want to talk about that? My mama was in a FEMA trailer that had, I don't even know if it was asbestos, but it also had that drywall, that poisonous drywall that was like full of lead or whatever. I had real good friends in college and they were talking about, yeah, when I grew up in my FEMA trailer, this is so commonplace. You'll hear this like, you know how like when some people say they went to summer camp, ours was like when I lived in a FEMA trailer. This is not a joke. This is not ha ha. I'm so fucking serious because all of us have had or when my house got ruined, or when I, when I was displaced, everyone has a Katrina story, just like in a similar way, everyone in New York has a 9-11 story, you know what I mean? It's not the same thing, but it's the only two large events that I can, you know, in magnitude with the media that I could kind of equate. My mama, my grandmother, the woman who raised my mother and raised me, lived in a trailer that was full of asbestos because her family home that she had lived in and built with her children and her husband, gone. Uh, where I grew up, gone. Like we went back not that long ago, it's still bones. And, and th this is who was lucky. I was lucky because I got to live and I get to be here today and I didn't starve in my attic and I wasn't a patient on life support in the hospital and I wasn't, and I just, I just want to say one thing. Everybody who comes from out of state to go to, you know, the private universities in New Orleans, I just want you to have a crumb of awareness of what we've been through before you come here. I just, I just need a, the same amount of awareness. I, I will never let this be forgotten because I will never forget. We will never forget it. We have not even processed it because they told us it was our fault they were pissed when we survived they were like fuck now there's gonna be all kinds of cleanup and da -da 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 -da. i and my loved ones and the people i grew up with have been treated as though we were disposable as though we were just in the way as though we were worthless and i want all of y'all to fucking remember that i don't even know how to articulate my feelings other than when I see a video from Gaza of like a family like just crying in fear, are you fucking joking? Like I don't I don't get emotional in here. It was it was me. Like I, like you and you don't know what's going to happen and we didn't have like cell phones, we didn't have social media. I, we couldn't contact it like my dad's family was out of state. Like, they, we, th there was, the phone lines were like underwater. Like, and people are seeing this now and people are hearing about this now. And I just can't help but think if people saw or heard then what we're showing them now. I, it's, it pisses me off as an academic, as a historian, who's going into a field where, like, this kind of elitism thinking is rampant. And <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that more is not being done. And, I, what, like, what am I going to fucking do? You know what I mean? But <sighs> they, they don't care, so we have to make them care. Yeah, you ever been in a classroom and it's like, you know, hypothetically, something that happened like to the people who suffered from Hurricane Katrina and everyone goes, oh, those poor people, those poor people. We don't really know anything about it, but if their city was built different, this probably wouldn't have happened. So, and then someone raises their hand and they're like, I think food stamps are a problem. Sometimes I tell people about my experiences being 100% genuine and they're like, are you okay? 
I, yeah, because my brain compartmentalizes it. The first really bad thing I can remember, obviously, was Katrina. Um, and then there's a chunk of my life that I don't remember as a child. I was nine. I mean, middle school, like, kind of remember. I mean, like, up until middle school. I don't remember anything from Katrina, probably, until I changed schools for middle school. Um, so that's about a two-year span um, as a child where it's just... It, the, the things you even on television right what i was seeing on television knowing these places i was like oh my mom's doctor's office is right there we were there a month and a half ago because i went with her because she had a doctor's appointment and now it like there it's the people on their roofs with like the signs begging for help and the helicopters just, like how do you live with yourself like my uncle at the time this was 2000 Five, he was a cop and a Louisiana cop and he had a boat and he was like going out to like rescue people and the National Guard or something I don't remember who it was but the army somebody was there and they were like turning people away from rescue and he was like showing his badge or whatever he's like hey I'm like going for a search and rescue and they physically turned him away and that's like someone from law enforcement you know what I'm saying so like like my grandfather on his boat what like you know what I mean and that's if you look into the Cajun Navy they are people who really just said fuck it all and and save people during Katrina again everything about this is like things I'm looking back and and re-remembering and relearning because I don't have these memories anymore and it's not just Katrina because since Katrina when I moved away Katrina hit I'm nine I moved away at 23 in that span we had at least a dozen major hurricanes my grandparents lost their house two more times after that they lived with us for a while i had friends there was a massive flood like this consistent 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 i had friends living in and out of my house because i i had a roof you know what i mean and it, i don't and now and now i go to work and now i do my silly little tasks and now i like every day is like it, it's been a natural disaster like every day of my adult life like everything you see I I don't I'm not articulate enough for this in the moment maybe I'll write something in the future but I do like I don't even have memories from my childhood be as just a tiny 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 minute fraction of the trauma that I went through specifically with Katrina, not counting the three, four other floods that destroyed my family homes. Where is the Red Cross in Gaza? Where are you? Let it not be forgotten that the Louisiana state government embezzled $3 billion of Red Cross funds from people during Hurricane Katrina, and we're watching history repeat itself right fucking now. So this is from the, uh, the History Channel. Uh-huh. Just listen. This is why we didn't get to evacuate. So by this time, where do you want us to go? Where do you think people, three quarters of this city doesn't own a car. We have been so used to the pumps working and the levees working. They didn't give a goddamn. There's a lot <clears throat> that I sincerely don't remember. Um, I was nine and a lot of the memories are kind of repressed. I haven't even like cognitively thought about this on purpose in years. And a lot of people ask me if I've seen Katrina babies, I'm physically not capable of watching it. Like I was a Katrina baby, <laughs> you know what I mean? I just like, I remember like, I, oh my Jesus. I'll have to like sit down and write something out because like, I'm like shaking just the thought and the memory of it like we it's been almost 20 years it's been almost 18 years this year we have not even begun to process let alone heal we have there like I have the shakes right now like I can't please listen when people talk about this because this is real and it's it's got lasting effects to this day and it, it could very well happen to you at the rate natural disasters are happening right now you like all of us need to be fucking aware very briefly um fema trailers were given to um survivors of uh, katrina victims of katrina uh because they were legally too toxic to dispose of um <clears throat> so fema 
distributed them amongst the people who were, uh, you know, displaced by Katrina, and most of them had, you know, some kind of black mold, some had formaldehyde in them, um, you know, and that d just was the most normal thing in the world growing up where I was, um, I, and I don't even have any, like, facts or statistics on that, I know I'm the person with all the stats and stuff, that is just, like, a deep, deep memory. I've been thinking on this one for a while, and I kind of, I kind of fear that as well, but, like, I, I grew up with, like, no one listening to me, you know what I mean? Everyone who was affected by hurricanes at large in the Gulf South, we grew up expecting no one to listen because nobody ever did. And I've got to say, I've reached more people on TikTok alone in the last month, not even in the four or five years I've been doing this, in the last month. I have gotten to speak to more people about the actuality of Katrina and the collective trauma that we have not even had time to process, let alone grieve. I have had millions of people see and hear this. And like, to me, I didn't think anybody gave a fuck. So anybody who has listened, who has put two and two together, about, you know, I, the second I saw about those Maui fires and the people coming in and buying up all the land, that's exactly what happened post-Katrina. Seeing the Red Cross in Gaza giving fake play toys of food to children instead of actual food. Making people pay for water and blankets when, like, I can't... I didn't, I, I wasn't at the Superdome. I wasn't in my attic. I was like in, I was fortunate to be able to evacuate. And when I say that, I mean that because think of New Orleans like New York. If you live in New York, chances are you do not own a car. If you do own a car, you've got the money and you've got the places to go outside of the city. I was, I grew up on the North Shore of New Orleans. So Lake Pontchartrain's here. This is where I grew up. This is where New Orleans is. The, the, uh, the Bonnie Carey Spillway and the Causeway connect us, right? So I lived on that North Shore and we knew it was gonna be bad, but we didn't know how bad. And then it turns into a category five right before landfall. And when it makes landfall to category three, we hadn't, my great, we had gone through more hurricanes, dozens a year that no one had ever heard about that ended up pattering out, but we, boarded up our windows I anytime I see like plywood on a window man like I get I, I feel like you can't go through New Orleans and not feel I'm not even talking about spirituality I mean like you go through and you feel loss and longing and regret and pain and shame and fear and it sucks because my God, what a beautiful city that we have. And there's the infrastructure's crumbling. It's a corrupt government. It's, there's collective punishment going on for, for citizens of Louisiana at, at large. And New Orleans itself is so beautiful. Kids have nothing to do, particularly post Katrina. I can really only speak in a post Katrina world because that's the only frame of reference that I've got. Kids have nothing to do after school. If your mom, if you have a single mom working two, three jobs, you, you're in school, your teachers don't give a fuck about you. Education has no funding. Education has no funding. And the good teachers that do care can't afford to, some of them are living out of their car. Do you fucking understand that? And then the curriculums that they teach are old and outdated. This is institutional. They don't want us learning about where we came from. They, they're, it's so much easier to let Katrina wipe everybody out, let hurricanes wipe each other out, and, and, and take that oil that's underneath our feet. I keep fucking harping on that because it's true and the best paying jobs you can get as a regular person in Louisiana not going to school whatever you can make great money working on an old rig dangerous scary work that takes you away from your family for a long time they treat your body like it's disposable same with the military industrial complex our black and brown and poor bodies are being just on a pipeline to the military. How else are you gonna get your mom out the hood? They know, they know you don't have money for college. They know that even if you did, it's it's not feasible to go there and you have to work. I worked my way through school. I was very grateful to have scholarships, but it still wasn't enough. Like you, 
And what kills me more is like everybody, oh, all the gang violence in New Orleans and the violence. There is violence because the infrastructure has crumbled. The drinking water is unclean. There's nothing for children to do at school or after school. So if the only fucking thing you're seeing is people moving in the streets and gang banging, and they're the only people you've ever seen have money, tangible physical money, when you live down the block from someone who has owned plantations for hundreds of years, and now they've pivoted and that plantation's like a wedding venue, this is real. What choice? The, we are not given choices. I Look at me. Look at me. I'm incredibly fortunate. I'm white and I'm blue-eyed. Above other things. But the things that have been said to me, I can't even fathom. I can't even fathom what black and brown people went through post-Katrina. Because when they called people looters, it, there's yes, are there dumb fucking idiots stealing TVs? Whatever. Sure. Who gives a fuck? Because those are idiots who... Should not even be focused on, but that's the only thing the news wanted to focus on. You can't focus on a mother clinging to her child and just trying to grab milk and baby formula. And, and let the National Guard was shooting at people indiscriminate. People were shooting indiscriminately. And, and it's too late to evacuate. They shut all the roads. They shut all the bridges. You can't get out. You are fish in a barrel. Well, why do you live in Louisiana if it's below a ball? Th the city was made in the 1600s. I was born there. There's one of my favorite quotes I want to fucking show you, too. This is a letter from 1879 um, to a friend in California about New Orleans. This is posted by Neutral Ground News. Great. New Orleans comedy and update account. Um, I can't recommend them enough. Um, things are not good here. The city's crumbling into ashes. It has been buried under a lava flood of taxes and frauds and maladministrations so that it has become only a study for archeologists. Its condition is so bad that nobody will believe when I write about it, as I intend to do soon. And nobody will believe I'm telling the truth, but it is better to live here in a sackcloth and ashes than to own the whole state of Ohio. No offense to Ohio. But the point stands. I live here. I'm. I, I'm. I, I, I live here. I'm proud to live here. My ancestors have lived here. I think about the fact that, like, I'm fortunate enough to trace my ancestry. Right. Some of my sides of ancestry are indigenous and and you know enslaved uh, Africans that don't. They're like I'm still struggling as an archivist to find records of these people. I've got first names, but they're like Catholic names that they took under you know like it's not their it's not their real names i don't even know some of my ancestors real names and this is not this is not this is not exclusive to me this is there i get worked up about this because sometimes it's like when you look around and you're the only person that gives a shit you feel fucking insane but thank you for letting me feel making me feel validated here just just even to get this shit off my chest because I desperately I see a city that is so beautiful and so rich in history and so collaborative in culture because when you come to New Orleans there's like for example there's a big uh wave of Vietnamese uh immigrants that were in New Orleans the fusion of you you maintain your own identity Vietnamese, you, you have your cuisine, everything, but there's this fusion, this Viet Cajun fusion that's this I I incredible uh, culinary uh, blend right now, and it, it, it's just, you know, there's very similar styles of cooking in Vietnam and Louisiana being, you know, crawfish are big in Vietnam as well, you have similar weather patterns. You come here and, you know, they say New York is a melting pot, and it is, but I think New Orleans allows a laissez-faire space for me to be me and you to be you, but us to be us. And I see that. I see untapped potential. I see destruction and fraud and abuse. And people have seen it for hundreds of years. I'm not saying anything new. But I thank you for taking the time to listen. We deserve more. We deserve more, period. We deserve a better infrastructure. We deserve a better school system for our kids. And when I was in school, there was something called TOPS. And it was like, it like encouraged you to like go to school in state because so many people who go to college from Louisiana end up going out of state. And I stayed and they paid for a, a hefty chunk of my, of my undergrad and I also lived at home. But all this to say like, there's, they, they cut that out. There, there's no more incentive 
to go to school in Louisiana. Anybody who goes to Tulane, if, you can ask anybody. That's all like out of state people. You know what I mean? It's too expensive for locals to go. I, I didn't even think about going. I'm in state. I was in state. I born and raised in Louisiana. And I was really like, I was going for LSU. I was go all this stuff. It ended up looking like $80,000. Who is that feasible for? Like I, and then I ended up going to like a smaller university, Southeastern University, bitch. That's my, that's my alma mater. I will rep it. Guess who else went to Southeastern? Uh, Robin Roberts on Good Morning America. So that's something. But I, I don't, I'm proud of where I'm from. And I hate when I bring it up to like out of state people. They're like, oh God. Ugh. Like you, you know, you guys, you guys have a lot of fun. It's the, it's the condescend. I see it in your fucking face. I, see, you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, say that we're dirty and you know, like raggedy, like you want to say. You want to call us ghetto. You want to call us trashy. You could say it. I'd rather you say that to my face, because the amount of, oh, you guys are, man. I don't think I boy visited once. It was too crazy. I could never. But good. It's so good that you like it. Yeah, it is so good that I like it. I don't fucking want you here. No offense. Yes, we have a tourist economy, but it's it, everything that happened in Maui reminds me so much of everything that happened with Katrina. The the wealthiest people in the country snapped it up to turn it into nightlife, this, that, and the other. And then all of the local institutions that give the place such culture, gentrification, end of. The areas that were saved were tourist areas, not residential areas, not lower income areas. By the way, it's their fault the areas are lower income because all the money gets funneled into tourism. Again, it's, it's not fair to be a child and to know like, they don't, who gives a shit about you? Like, there were like, like it's evident the lack of humanity and the lack of respect that comes from a lot of people. And I think New Orleans could be a really beautiful, wonderful cultural center. And I think within our lifetime, if we gave enough of a shit, it conceivably could be. I have never seen a commercial for the victims of hurricane. Go back and watch her video. Go back. Then come back to me, okay? So tiktok this for entertainment purposes only i'm just shooting the shit that's it nothing for real you know so my theory is from being an actual hurricane katrina victim because i was home during hurricane katrina like in my house home during hurricane katrina we didn't get reparations because it was planned it was a purposeful thing we were never supposed to get hit. The hurricane turned and we got hit at the last minute. I.e. how so many people died in their cars trying to get out. Also, um, we also, all of the people who died from staying in the FEMA trailers because of the um, exposure that they got from the FEMA trailers, those people never got paid. Their families never got paid. And then for... The people who are in Louisiana, a lot of them will tell you, um, you heard a boom, the ground shook, and then they got flooded. And with that being said, they kept telling us that we could not come back, but yet they moved in and took over our hoods in Louisiana. You think that wasn't planned? You think that what you really think that wasn't planned? Not to mention, not to mention, when whenever you hear Katrina, you don't hear nothing about Mississippi. You don't hear nothing about Mississippi. You only hear how bad Louisiana got it. Louisiana flooded worse, yes. We got the hurricane. We got fucked up. But you never hear nothing about Mississippi. It's always just Louisiana. I mean, you know, like I said, it's for entertainment purposes only. But we don't get reparation because it was planned. They wanted their city back. We had took that bitch over. They got it back. <laughs> like, I don't. Yeah.
talk to a real Katrina victim. Not to mention how they separated parents from their kids so that you didn't go back to Louisiana because you were so busy trying to find your child because you had mothers that was in Arkansas but kids that was in Texas but they don't talk about that neither yeah talk to a real Katrina victim we could tell you some shit that they did not show you on TV and let's remember how they called us refugees but talk to a real Katrina victim talk to one of us it is 18 years to the day since Katrina hit and um, two years to the day since Hurricane Ida hit when my parents lost their house. Um, this is still happening. Fires in Maui is a big example of like they don't give a fuck about us. And it is heartbreaking. And I don't even, I don't even, I don't even have anything to say. I just, 18 years and, and not dick shit has been done. Nothing kills me more than, why do you still live here? Why do you still live in fucking Kansas if you still live in Kansas? I think it's a stupid place to live. Why would you live there? Oh, oh, you like it and that's where you were born and that's where your family is and, that's where, and where the fuck else would you go without uprooting your whole life? Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, like not even to like just evacuate. They're like, why would you even want to live there? Why do you want to live in Bumblefuck wherever you are? Why do you want to live in whatever city you're in? It's not my fucking business. Just evacuate, just move. If you imagine being in New York City, no car. Nobody in New Orleans has a fucking car. You have no car, uh, a hurricane's coming, but you have been prepping for hurricanes every year for 40, 50 years within the same house that your family has lived in for four generations, right? You know to board up your windows. You know, you depend on the pumps and the levees working because it's city infrastructure and it has worked for hundreds of years. And then a full decade before Katrina, these specialists come in and they look at the levees and they say, these will not withstand a bad storm a decade before they knew. And they didn't do anything. No one cared about us. No one cared about us. They still don't care about us. And we have to, we have to scream to make them give half a fuck about us. When I was eight years old, the year before Katrina hit, um, I was noticing like a lot of the areas in the Louisiana wetlands were being eroded and we were learning about it in school. And I was very passionate about climate change and I wanted to make a difference. So I wrote a letter to President Bush, right? I didn't, I don't know, I didn't expect anything back. I was like, hey, I'm eight, I'm in Louisiana. This is what's going on. And I was, I was a smart kid. I knew my shit and I wrote everything down. And I was like, this is what's up. What can be done? Um, and then I get a, a letter back and I was like, holy shit, what? It was a headshot of George Bush, not signed, and a, a, a printed out piece of paper that said, these are websites that kids can go to learn about the environment. And I straight up told my mom, I was like, I know about the environment. Why does he think I was writing to him? And then like, not even a year later, Katrina hit. Um, and we all know how that turned out. Anyway, if you want, <laughs> I was radicalized as a youth for... A lot of reasons, but that one sticks. I don't know. That's part of the reason why I know people who took their first steps in a FEMA trailer and why my grandparents' FEMA trailer was covered in black mold and why one of my good friends had one filled with formaldehyde and why there are still uninhabitable parts of the city that we love so much and that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah, like, thank you for saying this because, like, you f at a certain point, I feel fucking crazy talking about this shit. I'm not. I'm not. But it feels like everything was stacked against us and then the, the whole government was like, what the fuck are you talking about? That didn't happen. I appreciate you guys listening. Um, if you are curious at all um, anymore, I've, I've talked um, in my Cajun slash Louisiana stuff playlist. I've got uh, a ton of videos where I've talked more at length about my experience in Katrina. Again, I still have not even scratched the surface. <laughs> um, this is just like personal anecdotal like this is just you know life stories I don't I, you know usually I come in with statistics and and records and things but um there's one I haven't even like like you know when you have like a delicate necklace it's like really really tangled I it, it's been tangled in the back of my head since 05 and I have honestly just started to kind of pull on it and 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 straighten it out and detangle it um, I'll keep, I'll keep talking about it because there's so many people who aren't around anymore to talk about it. Um, be, be incredibly compassionate to people, man. Just, it's, you have no clue. Like, people have no clue.
The whole reason that I went into archiving as my degree is because I want shit like this to be preserved for fucking ever because 20 years ago we wouldn't have been able to preserve this information. You know what I mean? We we can't afford to let people forget the real life effects it had on everyday human beings, the children, us, who have layers of trauma from our stories are the ones that need to be preserved for fucking ever. Because if you don't remember the past, guess what's gonna fucking happen again? And nobody talks about that because every fucking year we prep like it's doomsday and then nothing happens. Great, thank God, that's what we hoped would happen. But you do it every year and even if you are prepped, Katrina still happens. That's, that's where we are. So I stumbled upon the um, tape of Katrina that my parents took, um, the home video they took on the camcorder. Um, I'm going to find a way to watch it. Um, might take me a bit of time to do so. Uh, but I didn't even know we had this. So um, I will report back. The horror stories I have. And like you grow up with like all this propaganda. It's like the US is the best country in the world. And then it's like, okay, well, why did like a bunch of people I know and love like die in a bunch of hurricanes that like you said you were going to help us survive from and then you didn't. And then we didn't have any health care. We still don't have any health care. We're dying from complications uh, from living in formaldehyde ridden FEMA trailers and black mold ridden FEMA trailers. Um, which is fun because it's completely their fault. This happened almost 20 years ago um, to the day, like 18 years ago, August 25th or 29th, if I'm not mistaken. Fuck them, fuck them, fuck them. That really shook me and threw me for a loop. 20 years since Katrina um, next year. This August will be 19 years. So 2025, the Super Bowl being held in New Orleans will be 20 years since Katrina. Um, that's crazy. I don't even... And I know I'm the one with all kind of shit to say about that, but like that realization kind of kind of threw me for a loop. The people who still do not see the similarities between what is happening in Gaza and what happened with Katrina are either being willfully ignorant or are just blind. It is unsettlingly, frighteningly similar and to like, sit here and feel like you're doing nothing when you've been through hell and you see other people going through hell on an unimaginable scale Unim the, the hell we went through with Katrina the hell I went through with Katrina I can't fa it is willful ignorance I don't know what else to say about that I don't know what else to say about that the Red Cross situation in and of itself is laughably similar. I... Keep your fucking eyes open. Save everything you see. I said this morning, imagine if we would have had social media during Katrina. I don't know. I don't know. It's insane that I made this video before Christmas of last year, um, and it's only getting more and more prevalent and poignant. I'm literally seeing children who are the only survivors of like bombings in Gaza saying that like policemen and like soldiers were shooting at them, shooting and killing their parents. I know people who I went to school with who dealt with things like that. I'm from not even 45 minutes away from New Orleans. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. I can't even admit. I can't. I, I, I... What happened? I keep seeing um, videos of... Um, children who are the sole survivors um of like bombings in palestine right now and you hear them say things like like oh my god like the soldiers were shooting at us and our parents were dead and we were the only ones that were there 
and they were people were shooting at us the soldiers and policemen were shooting at us that's that's what happened in Katrina man like I'm not making this up that happened during Katrina cops and and like fucking people were being killed like instead of being rescued I it was treated like a hostile I don't rather than a natural disaster it was treated like a war zone and like it like what like what like what do I say like what else do I say no child left behind. Okay. Okay, girl. What about all the schools in South Louisiana that had to have classes in FEMA trailers um, years after Katrina hit, by the way? Um, we had overflow trailers at my high school. I don't know if they was FEMA trailers or not, but I wouldn't put, I wouldn't give them much credit. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so our children that got left behind, um, it was definitely um, during Hurricane Katrina um, when when the U.S. government left several children behind. Um, again, the Bush administration as well. So, no child left behind in school as long as they can make it to school. But you're on your own. That's T. It's true. It's true. The Katrina tra- <laughs> the Katrina trailer. When I tell you, like, you know, people people from other parts of the of the country are like, they have a story where they're like, when I went to summer camp, every one of us has like, when I lived in a FEMA trailer, when my mama lived in a FEMA trailer, when my cousins were in the FEMA trailer, when I was in school, and they made us have classes in FEMA trailers, Katrina hit 05. Why 11 years? Next year will be 20 years. Since Katrina hit. They abandon us. Let us drown and die and starve and force ourselves to, to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. After, what is your logical argument for children having... Not classes in classrooms. Fuck that. We already, let's pay our teachers, you know, $7 a year. Let's, let's let these kids fall through the floor of trailers, of FEMA trailers, that if you're lucky only have black mold. A lot of them had asbestos. <laughs> a lot of them had formaldehyde in them. How would you feel if that was your child? I can't believe I even have to put into context for people to like have a crumb of empathy. How would you feel if your child was abused? We were abused. We were neglected severely. We were left for dead and we were abused and we are still being abused. Oh yeah, and I fully agree with you. I fully agree with you. And this is this is a, from a separate comment thread. If the U.S. government is willing to let white people, some of whom are very wealthy, some of whom direct contact and, and relationships with, with government, conservative government, what makes you think it's not going to happen to you, to you, your family anywhere? You know what I mean? I fully agree. I fully This is... And, and also, I... I'm addressing other Katrina survivors, right? We, I am always with other Katrina survivors. The way that we all individually handle this trauma that we've not yet processed, I am always, this is my community, this is our community. I'm always going to be leveling with you. I don't know how to explain to people outside of our community the exact levels of criminal neglect, abuse, manslaughter, murder, murder. People were being murdered by cops, by National Guardsmen, by fucking insane lunatics that decided to like live out their little Call of Duty fantasy, right? What makes you think 
like in California, in, in I keep harping on the Maui wildfires, they b commercially bought up all the land that was destroyed by a natural disaster in a place they've already colonized, man. Like, the levels to, like, I try really hard to compartmentalize and not get emotional um, with this specific topic because, and then especially as a woman, they're like, oh, she's just so emotional. Like, I don't give a fuck anymore. I don't give a fuck anymore. And my credentials are severe, right? My area of expertise has been vetted, peer reviewed, and, and worked upon by top archivists in the world. I had my work about the loss of archives and the intentional destruction of records post Katrina validated on a peer level by archivists in the Vatican archives. I lived it, we lived it, we lived it. And people will still, that didn't happen to you guys. I didn't see it. What if I came up to you and you were like, a person in my family passed away and it was very tragic. That didn't happen. Why are you lying? Why are you spreading misinformation on a big scale? Oh my God, I know you think that happened, but you're being like way too sensitive. Nobody would just do that. Nobody would just die. Like that's fucking insane. Like you should, honestly, you should probably stop posting. This is why fucking stupid idiot people in the South are useless and worthless and uneducated. I've had the nastiest shit in the world said to my face. And if I was not on the clock at one of my bullshit old jobs, I would have jumped over the bar and I would have been in fucking federal prison, in fucking federal prison. And I don't even know if I've talked about the fact that like martial law, like people came to the city of New Orleans to kill other people, to treat it like the purge. Like they would get away with whatever. I haven't touched the amount of people, especially women and children, that were trafficked. Human trafficking. We know that there were 2,000 confirmed dead. That is a drop in the bucket. There was no way for us to get in. There was no way for us to get out. They could watch it from above. Like a like a car chase, you know what I mean? Like an entertainment. You watched, you, you watched, and you watched what they wanted you to watch. There was no, I couldn't take a fucking video and upload it. 2005. And when they were like, everyone is a looter, and they show the same three clips of like a couple assholes like stealing TVs. Oh, well, that must be everybody. That must be everybody there, including the women and children and elderly people and people in poverty and people who are in nursing homes and people who are in, uh, you know, ICU and people who are in the hospital and people who are on life support and people, who, you know, people, orphan children who are in foster homes and Animal shelters. My God, do I have to fucking bring up dogs to... I've seen more people upset about what happened to the animals in Katrina than the people. And that... I love animals, man. You said... You told us... Oh my God, that made me cry more than anything was just seeing the dogs. It was like my nine-year-old life worth less to you than that of a stray dog. I'm grown now. You can tell me to my face. Tell me. Tell me. This person in school as a child, found their teacher dead 
in a FEMA trailer that they were using at schools after Hurricane Katrina. Another person told me they took their first steps in a FEMA trailer. They could have like, those trailers had black mold, asbestos, and formaldehyde in them. Those trailers were legally too toxic to dispose of. This was a tax write-off. <laughs> I had a friend tell me, oh my God, is that formaldehyde? Is that why my eyes were burning all the time when we lived on that trailer? And no one cares. No one outside of our community cared. I'm sorry. Like, I could talk about this for hours and hours and days and never tell you everything. I have repressed memories for years of my childhood around that time. The memories I have are strong, but they are by no means complete. And it's also through the eyes of a child, of a baby. This was 20 years ago. I'm just now remembering some of the things that I saw in real time. I do, yeah. Um, there's a, it's getting harder to, it's getting harder to discuss these things um, lately. But like, even like, my three best friends and I, we've been friends for a decade. Um, we were all severely affected. Um, one of my best friends, her grandmother, um, you know, raised by her grandmother like I was um, in the Ninth Ward, an area that is still uninhabitable. And we just had to go on and on every day. Okay, I'm going to school. Okay, I'm going to class in a FEMA trailer. Okay, I'm learning, you know, that the government is always right. And I'm, you know, like it. And this is like post 9-11, like nationalism. Do you know what I mean? Like that's what I was being raised. And I was like, why, why would I like, why would I believe that? Why would I believe that when the exact opposite was just proven to me? four years later. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it, but I have to talk about it because I've never talked about this on a in-depth scale. My fucking hands are shaking right now. I talk to people for a living. Do you know what I mean? I pride myself on being able to explain things and reach people, I don't know. And like, what, <laughs> what do I do? Because I can't even stomach what, you know, and there's, there's people who are asking me for like resources to go and, I don't know, like I don't, I know, I, I know that I've known for a while I haven't watched any of these documentaries, man. I'd love to be able to watch, like, the Spike Lee one about it, and I'd love to be able to... I can't watch Katrina Babies ever, because I was a Katrina... I am a Katrina baby, and I'm still alive. My best friends are Katrina babies. I talked to people on this app who were the people that were trapped in their attics for weeks, man. And we're here, and now we're seeing the exact same shit on a global scale every day every fucking day i see videos of children it's you're not meant to exist in this kind of world it's so fucked up it's so fucked up and i've tried being articulate and i've tried using my credentials and and i don't Talking about your personal experience only goes so far. And I'm just glad that you guys listen because, like, 
People don't believe me. People don't believe me, man. So thank you for believing me. Um, I don't need anyone to believe me. I don't need that because I know what happened. We know what happened. But no, everyone knowing about this <laughs> could change shit on an unimaginable scale. Uh, fuck, fuck it. There's something about a land where the heat sticks to your ribs and the moss hanging from the thick live oaks resembles the flutter of a girl's hair in the wind. The cypress knees are bruised and bumpy like your own when you were a kid, when you try to jump across them and inevitably slip in the bayou mud. Everything is green, even if it isn't. The plants seem to breathe. The very air around you seems to move, to be teeming with life. The tapping of rain on tin roofs is ubiquitous. Cicadas score the sharp rays of the sun, their hissing giving voice to the sting of heat on already sun-stroked skin. The knolls in the trunks of hollowed out trees begin to bend upward into their own miraculous grottos, a stage for the virgin's assumption to be admired by the squirrel and the rabbit and the coquetry all alike. You don't have to know her to love her. You only need to feel. It's as if your body is drawn to the earth, the pillowy grass and mossy tendril draped branches that melt into the water, flowing ever slower down the bayou. There's a little slough down the way. That's where the river meets the bayou. That's where the prairie meets the swamp. That's where the river flows slow and easy, curling around the river banks like rich green smoke, deep and dark and endless, but gentle enough to rock you down the by like your mom and him used to do. You were little, real little, but you remember. You remember feelings like photographs. A sunset over the river, rich orange light saturating the mossy earth. There weren't any sticker bushes in this grass, so Momo said you can come out here with no shoes on. The orange light wraps itself around the bark of the trees, making stripes of light and shadow across your grandmother's arm. There's a scar on it from the time that she caught a hot pan from the oven before it could land on you. The light is richer now, warm umber bleeding into rich red. You miss the orange light. Orange is her favorite color. <laughs>